Hi, I'm Karen. I am the INACAC facilitator for this session with St. Louis University. A couple of uh, housekeeping details. First of all, you will be asking questions if you have them in the Q&A section. You will not use the chat, so please use the Q&A. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot hear you or see you. And we would encourage you to sign up for more sessions for the rest of this week. You can go to inacac.org backslash virtual dash college dash exploration. So now I would like to turn it over to our guests from St. Louis University. Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself, everyone. Thanks for, thanks for coming. My name is Richard Brown and I am the admission counselor for uh, the state of Indiana. Uh, I have a, another admission counselor here, Anne. She's just going to be answering in the chat, so you won't see or hear from her. Um, but she will be there at answering any questions that she can in the chat. And then after my presentation, which I promise will be swift, I'm going to let these three lovely students who currently attend SLU introduce themselves, and then you guys are going to get a chance to ask any questions. And if you can't come up with any, I luckily have quite a few prepared. Um, so, uh, like we said, but you know, before we begin, uh, as we all know, I would much rather be doing this in person, but this is Zoom. Um, so if, if anything goes awry, please, please forgive me. I just have a, I have a new puppy and she is loud. So if you hear that in the background, I apologize. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started with the presentation. So um, where is and what is St. Louis University? So St. Louis University is a mid-sized Catholic Jesuit institution uh, with uh, just over 8,000 undergraduates enrolled with a total uh, size of 12,500. So that includes like non-traditional students, graduate students and doctoral candidates. Uh, we do have two campuses, one located here in St. Louis uh, where I am and then another one located in Madrid, Spain. So those are two separate campuses with Madrid, uh, SLU Madrid being its own degree granting university, but I'll talk a little bit more about that and the study abroad options that we have a little bit later in the presentation. So we are the second oldest uh, Jesuit institution in the United States, founded way back in 1818. We were actually the oldest university west of the Mississippi. So uh, we have been around for a long time with the history of Jesuit education. And so what, is, what does that mean, what Jesuit education being a Jesuit institution? So the Jesuits are the largest order of Catholic priests. And what it really means to be a Jesuit institution has to do with our philosophy on education. We believe in educating the whole person. Uh, so it's academically, socially, physically, and spiritually in whatever way that pertains to you. So you do, you do not need to be Catholic to attend uh, St. Louis University. We believe in academic excellence, social justice, and being a person for and with others. We are, we are more concerned about who you become as compared to what you become once you leave here. Uh, like I've said, the Jesuits are home to all faiths. You do not need to be Catholic to attend. Many, many of our students don't, but that does not mean that you can't find yourself more in whatever spirituality that you may or may not have. Uh, but one example and a huge example of the way that SLU lives out that Jesuits mission is last year, our faculty, students, and staff contributed almost 2 million hours of community service. So we are uh, very much, I would say, a service-based organization. And that starts from the ground up. Every, every part of our organization just believes in giving back to the community. And you can see that with that the 2 million hour mark. So this is our mascot, a billikin. And you might be wondering, what in the world is, is this creature in front of you? And so the billikin is actually a symbol of the way things ought to be. And it's actually a good luck charm dating way back to uh, 1908. Um, it was a fad back then, it, it created by an art teacher in the St. Louis area. And for better or worse, one of our football coaches, John Bender at the time, you know, wore a striking resemblance to this Billiken. So people started calling them Bender's Billikens, the football team, and that just sort of snowballed into the mascot that we have today. But to SLU students, the Billiken is a reflection of the university's mission. And to being, being a Billiken is, uh, is a way of life. So, um, so speaking more about that mid-sized institution feel. So you have a lot of the benefits of a large institution with a lot of the benefits of a smaller institution as well. So that's the, the benefit you get from the smaller institution is that 26 average class size. So we want to create a more intimate environment um, 
probably what you're used to in high school and then a nine to one student faculty ratio. So we want you to not just be another number in this classroom for these faculty members. But we also do have a lot of the benefits of a larger institution with 99% of SLU's faculties uh, holding the highest degree in their field. So if there's a doctorate available in that field, they have that. That's because that this is not just a part-time job for our faculty members. This They're researchers and experts in their field. We also have 18 D1 sports. So if you're in the athletics, this is a great school for you. Over 150 student organizations, which I'm sure some of our students here will talk about during that panel. Uh, and we do actually, uh, our average GPA we have is a 3.91 GPA uh, to get into SLU. And speaking of areas of study and getting into SLU, what do you want to major in? And that's, a, I know it's a big point of contention for a lot of uh, prospective students and, and what do you want to do? Luckily for you, SLU has tons and tons of options, nearly 90 undergraduate programs including tons of minors and, and plenty of concentrations within those programs. So that's time for anywhere from College of Arts and Sciences to uh, Doisy School of Health Sciences to uh, the Richard A. Chaffetz School of Business. So we have a wide variety of majors that you can choose from. So I'm going to speak a little bit less on this and let the students talk about this more during their presentation, but this is our beautiful campus. So right here, you'll see Grand Boulevard with the Bush Student Center on the right hand side. So this is the only road that cuts right through our campus. We are in downtown St. Louis. We're not downtown adjacent as, uh, as, as, as we've had some questions asked before. We are right downtown. And so living in that environment is just has an energy that you're not going to feel a lot of these other institutions. So speaking of downtown St. Louis, um, we are in Midtown St. Louis. So um, this, we are right in the Grand Center, the Arts District. So you're gonna find the Fox Theater um, right, right across the street from, from campus. You're also going to have that downtown feel with tons of restaurants, tons of things to do surrounding campus. Just a 20, 30 minute walk away is gonna be Forest Park to the West. And that's the largest urban park in the United States. That's going to have a zoo, three museums, an outdoor amphitheater. Um, all of those are within walking distance, and it is a really fantastic area. So I promised I'd talk a little bit more about Madrid, Spain. So we do have a separate campus that is right in Madrid, Spain. So you can choose to go there for all four years. You can choose to go there for two years and transfer, or you can treat it like a traditional study abroad program. In addition, uh, to that campus in Madrid, Spain, we have approximately 45 SLU approved study abroad programs. So these programs allow our students to study in many different countries with the same benefits as our Madrid campus. So we have alumni all over the world who are willing to help you find a place to study. And once again, I'm going to have these students talk a little bit more about what living on campus is like during the student panel. So um, student involvement, something else that they're going to be speaking to a little bit more, but just to give you some highlights, we do have 30 club sports and 15 intramural programs. So if you're not a D1 athlete, but still want to be involved in athletics, we have plenty of opportunities for you. With over 150 student organizations, you're going to find something that you're going to enjoy or a like-minded group of people for you to interact with, along with seven fraternities, seven sorority is 10, 10 multicultural fraternities. Uh, approximately 20% of our students do participate in those in the Greek community. And as a Jesuit university, this is, this is high in our mind and I'm, and I'm sure right on the top of everyone's mind during this time. But part of our mission is personalis or care for the whole person. And actually cure, cure personalis is the driving concept for our community during the fall 2020 semester. So to keep our campus safe, everyone is required to wear masks. In-person events larger than 10 people have been canceled, unfortunately, but we do wanna keep our students safe. And students do have the option to be completely online this semester. These are just a few ways we're working to keep our students healthy while also providing them with a quality education. Not only are we working to keep our campus community safe, our faculty researchers, along with some of our students, are exploring ways to extend cure personalities outside the SLU community. Our researchers are working on vaccine trials and how to identify and track outbreaks and developing guidelines for infection prevention. So we are taking this seriously and I think our record so far speaks for itself. So how do you become a Billiken. Well, first you can start with either applying through our application or the common application. We do not prefer one over the other. So whatever is most convenient for you, our application is free. So if that route interests you, you can definitely go through slu.edu slash apply. Two, we're gonna need your official transcript. So you cannot send those to us. Those have to come from your counselor. If you're an international student, we're gonna need some English proficiency exam certification. Uh, four, we recommend 
letters of recommendation, a resume, and an admission interview with me. I'm, I'm your admission counselor, so you'd have those with me. Uh, those just give us a better look at who you are as a well-rounded person instead of just numbers on a piece of paper. And then number five, uh, we actually just are in the middle of a three-year trial period for test optional. So we don't require test scores for any part of the admission process here at St. Louis. So if you want to submit a score that you're really proud of, fantastic. We, we uh, think you should do that as well. But if you don't want to submit one or you haven't been able to take one because of COVID, we absolutely understand. And that is not required for any part um, of, of our admission process. So here is some deadlines that you're going to need to know of. So for December 1st, there's going to be deadlines for three or four of our most competitive programs. So physical therapy, occupational therapy, nursing, and flight science, you have to have applied to the university by December 1st to be considered for these programs. Um, that's just because these are highly competitive direct admit programs that they, they need to start reviewing them as, as quickly as possible. Uh, we also have some of the more honors and scholars based programs. So medical scholars, which is our, uh, our fast track to med school program, university honors program, the presidential scholarship is our full ride scholarship. And so that has a, a deadline of December 1st and the physicians assistant scholars and the pharmacy scholars, both sort of fast tracks for, the, for those different degree paths. Speaking of scholarships, your application for admission is your application for merit-based scholarships. So there's not, there's not two separate applications you have to worry about for the merit-based scholarships. We will automatically consider you for these funds when you apply and those range anywhere from eight to 23,000 a year and are renewable for all four years that you attend SLU. December 1st is that priority deadline for merit-based scholarships. So please, please be sure to apply by then. We cannot guarantee any merit-based scholarships after if you apply after December 1st. We do have two special scholarships. Both require a separate application and an interview on campus or virtually on campus if you are selected. So that's the presidential scholarship. This is a leadership scholarship that uh, I've already spoken of has a December 1st deadline. To apply, you must have at least a 3.85 out of a 4.0 GPA. And we're looking for an outstanding leader in your high school and your community. Now the Martin Luther King Jr. scholarship deadline, that's actually February 1st. And that requires a 3.25 GPA to be considered. This scholarship is more for students who live out the ideals of Dr. King and who are leaders in promoting diversity in their high school and community. So now this is a minimum of an additional $3,000 a year that is stackable on top of that merit-based scholarship. So that present scholarship would sort of take over and just give you a full ride, but the MLK scholarship would stack on to whatever your merit-based is. So I touched on these a little bit earlier and we're just gonna run through these um, relatively quickly, but here are some of the honors and scholars programs we have. The University Honors Program uh, is a separate application required with a deadline of December 1st. You must have a cumulative GPA of 3.8 and students in the Honors Program takes honors only seminar style classes. They have priority registration and they can actually live in the honors learning community. So it's a pretty prestigious program to be a part of. Medical scholars, physician assistant and pharmacy scholars are all fast tracks for their specific programs. And all of those have a deadline of December 1st. Uh, Community Science and Disorder Scholars is, has a deadline of February 1st, and we want a GPA of 3.5, where the Law Scholars is also February 1st, and we're looking at a 3.25 for the top 40%. So all of these six uh, you have to apply for. The two on the bottom, the Business and Accounting Scholars, the GPAs are 3.75 and 3.6 respectively, those are invite only. So if you apply for those programs and you get in and you have those GPAs and they like what they see, they will invite you into those programs. So some uh, important dates. I know I'm throwing a lot of dates at you, but these are we, that's because we really, really want to hammer home uh, the dates that, the, that you need to have things in. October 1st is when FAFSA becomes available. So that date's already passed. But if you haven't done it yet, we implore you to do it as quickly as possible. November 1st is when regular, regular admission decisions uh, become available. December 1st is a bunch of those scholarship deadlines, deadlines to apply for some of our more competitive programs and for some of those honor scholars and the presidential scholarship. February 1st, we've already talked about, PTOT nursing decisions get released. And that's actually also the preferred deadline for filing FAFSA. That's also the pre-law uh, community and disorders scholars and the MLK application is due during that time. And then in early March, the honors and scholars decisions are going to be released with May 1st being the national candidate reply date. So that's usually when you'll have committed to an institution. So how do you, if you wanna visit SLU, how do you engage with us? So we do have virtual visits available. So you can check up 
uh, or you can check out our website. It's a fantastic website. It was just redone. So we do have um, a tour that's completely virtual that you can sort of take a 360 tour of our campus on your computer, on your phone. We have another option where a student can walk you on their phone and you can be at the safety of your own home. Or we are also now offering on-campus uh, tours with a, with a live student. Uh, for the safety of you and our students on campus who are unable to go in as many halls, or as many buildings as we have in the past. So bear with us, but those, those are available as, uh, as, uh, as of now. So I know I rushed through that, but I really did want to get to the, the student panel that we have coming up. So I'll stop sharing my screen. And if the students could unmute their um, video. And I'd like everyone to go around starting with Kelly and then Lydia and then Benjamin, if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about um, what you do at SLU and maybe why you chose SLU. Awesome. Yeah. So hi, my name is Kelly. I'm a senior at SLU this year studying education and English. And um, I've been involved with a bunch of stuff along the way, um, namely our first year experience leadership team. I'm an Oriflam leader, as well as a university 101 peer instructor. I studied abroad at our Madrid campus. So I'm a study abroad peer mentor, as well as a school of education peer mentor. And I'm involved in Relay for Life on campus. And do you want me to do my whole why I chose sleep right now, or should I save it? Do it now? Okay, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I chose SLU because it is such a great community feel. I loved the feeling that I got when I stepped on campus. Uh, as I was touring schools, I was told that like I would know when the place was right for me. And I toured a lot of schools before coming to SLU. And I didn't think that feeling was real until I stepped on SLU's campus. And I just was in like such a welcoming environment of people who are really proud to be Billikens. And I just loved it. Hi, everyone. My name is Lydia. Um, I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. I'm a junior. I'm studying health management and policy and I have minors in public health and finance. Um, some things I'm involved with, I'm involved with our radio station here at SLU. I'm involved in a service fraternity and a feminist group. Um, why I came to SLU was a lot of the reasons Kelly just said, so I won't repeat them, but also it was a really good size for me at about 8,000 undergraduate students. It felt like you would know someone every time you walked somewhere, but you wouldn't know everyone. It wasn't too small or too big for me. And it was like a perfect distance from home for me too. Hey there, everyone. Uh, my name is Benjamin. I am a senior here at SLU studying health science on the pre-med track. Um, besides working in the office of admission, uh, I'm also part of fraternity and story life here. I work as a resident advisor in Reinhardt Hall um, and then I do research for the Department of Sociology. Um, and so for me, my like why SLU or like the moment I knew I was going to SLU, um, actually it wasn't like on a tour or anything. I had actually just, I was meeting my family to get dinner at one of the restaurants just right off campus. And like I beat them there. And so I kind of wan wandered around campus like blindly. Um, and I, as I went up and down the main strip of campus, it just felt completely natural. And it was really cool because, you know, um, nobody there was like trying to impress me. And yet it still really made my day just walking and talking to people. And I went and I sat down at um, this bench that's right in front of our campus church in the fountain. And I like sat there and meditated and kind of just thought things out for a second. And I felt like this inner sense of peace. And I told myself that if I could make that inner sense of peace lasts for four years, I would do it in a heartbeat. So that's my why Slu. Wow, guys, thanks for thanks for sharing that. That's really special. Um, so I, I think I'll get started with the first question that I'm sure is on a lot of students' minds. Um, kind of tell me about your experience with, with COVID this year as far as, as how that impacted your school life. And we'll just go in the same order if we want each time, Kelly, Lydia, and then Ben. Perfect. Um, so yeah, it was obviously super different than any of the past years. Um, but I know a lot of our professors have put, or all of our professors have put in a lot of time and a lot of people behind the scenes have done a lot of work to make this semester happen for us. Um, and so students kind of had the choice as was sort of covered in the presentation, uh, whether they wanted to come back in person or not. And same with the professors. And so some of our classes are face-to-face -face, all like 
in person. Some of them are a hybrid with like part of the week being online and part of it in person. And then some are completely virtual. Um, and it just kind of went along with what the professors um, felt comfortable with. And it's been going really well. I think everyone's super helpful and very flexible, which is awesome. Um, for me, I guess I can touch on last spring when everything kind of went haywire. Um, a lot of my classes pretty much picked up like the next week and it was pretty seamless. And I know my professors did a ton of work like making the transition as smooth as possible. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, but this semester I've noticed that there's a lot more emphasis on mental health um, than in semesters past, which I think is a really good thing, just like in general too. Um, so I think that's important to note too. I guess I can like touch on a little bit of like kind of how our community it's as a whole kind of has responded. Um, because the thing that I learned about COVID is that like, um, it affects everything, it really does. But how it affects things is different depending on what it is, because what it does is it enhances whatever was there before. So if you were frustrated with the class before, you're going to be probably more frustrated now. If you had like a great relationship with like your professor before, you're going to have a great relation, an even better relationship with them now. And like specifically for our community, it's been really cool to me to see that our community grew stronger, not weaker. The like love that we had for each other grew stronger, not weaker. And it was kind of cool to see how we wanted to reach out to each other and be able to build that community, even kind of in one of those kind of dark times and be able to have a like a slew community that stands together with each other. Thank you so much. Um, and, and Lydia, back to Lydia's point about the, the mental health being, being extremely important this semester. Uh, what resources are there to make sure students can take care of their mental health and also their physical well-being? And maybe maybe give an example of 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 how maybe that's played into your your career here. Yeah. Um, so for mental health, I think the main resource is that you're offered ten free counseling sessions at our university counseling center every academic year. Um, now those are virtual, but I think those have definitely like picked up um, since you know last spring. Um, another good thing for physical and mental health is our gym is still open. Um, you just have to wear a mask the whole time, which is, you know, whatever, but um, that's like a good way to take care of your mental and physical health. Um, the, college, the College for Public Health and Social Justice that I'm in for my major, um, they send a mailer every week and there's like resources for mental health and like taking yourself, um, especially as like the winter comes up and we're going to be on break for a while too. So I those are some of the resources I have, if you guys have anything to add. No, that's okay. No, th thank you so much, Lydia. Uh, and now kind of uh, pivoting to the student life and the, and the residential side. Uh, why doesn't everyone go by and tell us where you lived your freshman year and uh, maybe the most memorable experience you had your freshman year? I lived in the best residence hall on campus, Walsh Hall is totally the best. It's in the Grease Duck Complex. I would push everyone to live in Walsh Hall if they can. Um, it was such a great experience. And my favorite memory was that everyone on my floor would keep our doors open. And so uh, people would often, my room was the hangout room because it was like the first one as you came down the hall. So everyone would just get sucked right into my room and never make it back to theirs. Um, and it was so great. So community living is the best. Live in Walsh for sure. <laughs> I lived in Greece that I call my freshman year, but I did live in Walsh Hall sophomore year. Um, they're both really great. Um, I definitely wouldn't change it. Um, I think my favorite memory was when we all like decorated the floor for Halloween and Christmas um, those semesters. It was like really fun to do that with the entire floor. Uh, so for me, uh, I lived in Reinert Hall for my first year. Um, and now as an RA, I liked it enough that I was willing to come back the second they asked me. Um, so that kind of just speaks to like the community that is established here and it's really cool. Um, and my probably favorite memory was like we, we had a group on our floor that um, participated in something called the Hall Games, 
Um, so it was a bunch of different competitions between like different groups, like throughout the um, campus and throughout the residence halls. And so my, my team ended up winning it. So we got box seats for the Cardinals game. Um, it was absolutely fantastic. I loved it. Um, and that was my favorite memory by far. That's amazing. I would have loved box seats for the Cardinals game. Um, so to speak a little bit about uh, what's life on campus like during the weekend. So uh, do a lot of students stay on campus or do they leave? What's that like? Yeah, as far as um, staying on versus going off, both are definitely opportunities for you. As a residential student, you do get a Metro pass. So you're able to explore the St. Louis uh, area and not just be confined to campus. But I find that a lot of people choose to stay on campus just because it's beautiful and we like to hang out here a lot. Um, one big thing for students to do on campus, I'll only talk about one, so everyone has something to talk about, but hammocking is huge on SLU's campus, not just on the weekends, any day of the week. Uh, SLU has community hammocks that are normally out um, that you have to like sprint to like grab one when it's free. Um, but we also have lots of really nicely spaced trees for hammocking, and it's just like a huge cultural thing here at SLU. Uh, just to touch on again, um, on and off campus, I'd say like as far as going home for the weekend, a lot of students tend to stay here except like for fall or um, Thanksgiving breaks. Um, one thing I like to do is go to Forest Park um, on the weekends and like grab dinner afterwards with some of my friends because um, everything at Forest Park is free, even like all the museums too. So that's really nice, um, but yeah. Yeah, those are definitely like some great things for sure. I love, so I love St. Louis. Um, I, it's a fantastic city and there really is always a lot of stuff to do like with like concerts or performances or um, I always say like, we are the best sports town in, in America. The St. Louis Cardinals is basically a religion here, um, which is fantastic. It, there's really a lot to do. Um, I honestly though, my absolute favorite box theater, absolutely love it. Um, use the use your like student email to get those student rates. Um, I've seen, oh gosh, okay. I've seen Hello Dolly, that was fantastic. Aladdin, fantastic. When Whole New World came on, I straight fanboyed out here so hard when that happened. Um, let's see, Sound of Music was killer. Just a lot of really good shows that come through and a lot of different performances. Can't go wrong. It is one of my favorite places in St. Louis. So, what about food? What is, what is food on campus like? And then if you want to give an example of maybe your favorite restaurant off campus. So food on campus, there's tons of different options for you. Um, my go-to is always our Einstein bagel that we have in the library um, whenever I'm studying there. And even when I'm not going to the library, I love to go grab some good Einsteins. And then off campus, that is so tough. Uh, there's St. Louis is such a foodie city. I'll take it right out of Anne's mouth. It, it is the best place. You can eat your way through the city, no problem. Um, and so my favorite place is probably Mission Taco. It's delicious and not too far from campus. I'd say for on campus, my favorite place is the cafe in the business school. I kind of like to say like sub, Subway on steroids. Um, I think it's better um because they make your like sandwich or wrap or salad to order and then they toast it for you and they have like all these really good sauces too um but off campus i think salt and smoke um it's a barbecue place it's really good best mac and cheese i've ever had uh so my answer obviously the right answer is fresh gatherings um it is unbelievable it's on our south campus portion um and it's hard to describe what they do because they literally do everything um, it, be, because with fresh gathering, they kind of just cycle through a bunch of different items. They have a couple like mainstay items of like their breakfast burritos, stuff like that. And a couple like sandwiches and stuff right now that they do. But then like they will each week kind of have a new menu item. So like one week it's burgers, then it's po' boy sandwiches. And then it's like stir fry. Like it just always is changing. It's fantastic. Um, when you eat it, it will be a religious experience for you. I promise it is absolutely fantastic. Their breakfast burritos, I have waited in some long lines to get that breakfast burrito. And I may have been late to class at a couple of times as a result of trying to get that breakfast burrito. 
Well, I'm just going to brag about my favorite place. So I, I've not been in St. Louis for very long, um, but I was fortunate enough to move right next to a, like a food truck depot that just opens called Nine Mile Garden in Afton. And so every day for lunch and dinner, it has different food trucks from all over the city. So I have eaten around St. Louis without having to go further than a quarter of a mile from my house. So I think my favorite one there is Soul Taco. If you guys haven't gotten that before, it is fantastic. It's a South Korean taco place. And I, it's only there for lunch. So if you're a student, it's a 20 minute drive. It's a little far, but boy, I would, I would do anything for Soul Taco. Um, so I know we've talked about a little bit before with the, some of the things that you guys are involved in on campus, uh, but why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit more about you know, more detail what you got involved in and then how you got involved in some of those things. Yeah, so um, in the fall of my freshman year, as, as we do every year, we have something called the SLU Fair and West Pine, which is our central walkway of campus is just lined with tables, the whole length of it. And every organization and club and activity that we have tables out there and you can ask them questions, you can sign up for their email list just to get some more information. Um, and that's how I became involved on campus. So my first year I got involved with Slunatics, which is like our school sports fans team. Like it's anyone that goes to SLU is a Slunatic because we all love the Billikens. Um, but this team would just like go into the like student section and like rile everyone up at sports games, which is super fun. And that's also when I joined um, Relay for Life as well as our photography club on campus. And um, so you can jump in and out of like activities when, you know, as your, your, your first year, you feel like you want to do something. And then later on, you decide that that's not for you. Totally okay. Um, and same with just like signing up. I would totally recommend signing up for things that maybe you wouldn't always see yourself doing because it could be fun just to like give it a shot. Um, for me, I, I joined a lot of the clubs the same way Callie did, but particularly this year, I actually joined the campus radio station this semester. So the way I joined um, and the way a lot of first year students are joining their clubs this year is going through our kind of like our database for all of our clubs it's called SLU groups and just like paging through those and seeing what you're interested in getting on their email lists. Um, just like getting in contact, however you can. Um, and that's like the best way I think to get involved right now as everything is kind of canceled for the moment. Uh, so for me, um, I am part of Camp Kesem, um, which is an organization that uh, works to support um, children whose parents have been battling cancer. And so every summer we do like a summer camp that's free for them. Um, and I have absolutely loved it. Um, I actually kind of like signed up accidentally. Like I accidentally signed up to be part of their mailing list. Um, I Yeah. But then I like started reading their information and I was like, wow, this is actually like super cool. And now like I'm on eboard for them. So like it can really come at you fast there. Um, but I think like one of the best things is like if you aren't able to, you know, visit a specific club like during like an act during the activities fair or stuff like that, they will never turn you down if you want to join a club midway through semester, midway through year. Everyone here at SLU is so passionate about the clubs that they're a part of and they want others to be passionate about it too. So they'll always be like, come, you know, just come see what it's about you know, learn a little bit. If you like it, cool. If not, it's all, all good the same. Um, but yeah, there's always with the SLU groups and stuff like that, a chance to be able to reach out to those clubs um, and contact them to get more information on them. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so now we talked about a little bit about some volunteer aspects or some things that you've been a part of. Talk a little bit more about on-campus or off-campus jobs. So what are some opportunities for students either on campus or off campus? Yeah, so there's definitely opportunities both on and off for jobs and for service. Um, those are both really good ways to get involved in the community. Um, so as far as on campus jobs, well, I guess off as well, we have something on a SLU, uh, on your MySLU portal called Handshake and that will like list a bunch of jobs that are open um, and available to you and you can apply through that. And that's a really great way to just like see what's around and what's available. Um, for federal work study students, there's tons of jobs on campus for you like desk working, 
Um, and then this is our job working for the Office of Admission, which is a pretty great job to have. But also as far as like off campus things, um, because I'm an education and English major, I'll get emails from like my academic advisor when people reach out about needing tutoring or things in the St. Louis area. Um, they'll reach out to us to see if like we would be interested in it. So sometimes like based on your major, you can find jobs around the area just like by word of mouth. I can talk about some service opportunities. So there's a lot of on and off campus service opportunities. Um, a lot of clubs, like I'm sure we're all part of a club that does some form of service, um, whether that be fundraising or doing service or volunteering one time. Um, a lot of, or I've taken a couple classes now that are have a service component to them. So you have to do like 15 or 20 hours um, for the semester for the class, which I think is really cool. I had a theology class that was called sports, spirituality and social justice. And every Sunday night, I just got to play soccer with like fifth graders um, with some of my classmates and it was super fun. Um, so there's like plenty of ways to get involved. We have a whole center like dedicated to service and community engagement. So tons of options. Um, I was gonna touch on like with regards to like working on or off campus with our career services. Um, and so with that, it's a great um, resource for students to be able to use. Um, you can use it while you're here as a student, but you can also use it when you're an alumni, which is really awesome, especially when you're graduated and, you know, making job searches or like transitioning between jobs or anything like that. Um, and they're absolutely fantastic in helping to work out and give you that kind of consultation to make sure that you can feel prepared when you're applying for jobs and stuff like that. I know, especially like, you know, you may get your first like real job in college. And so uh, something like in an application or like a resume building and stuff like that may seem a little bit scary, but they do a great job to be able to kind of workshop with you and make sure that you're prepared and that you can best articulate your ideas um, onto your resume, onto your cover letter. And they'll also do like uh, mock interviews um, and they'll kind of structure it into what your needs are um, to make sure that you're prepared to be able to answer those interview questions and make sure that regardless of what happens, you're always ready. Thank you. So now, as, as far as you talked about all the organizations you're a part of and the jobs that you're a part of, how have you been able to balance that? The jobs, the organizations, your schoolwork, probably some form of social life, hopefully. How are you balancing those things, especially during you know, these tumultuous times? It took a lot for me to figure out time management. Um, I was not super good at it when I came into school. And uh, I would like, you know, I'd get home from class and be like, I have three hours, like I can watch Netflix and take a nap. And like I could, but it wasn't always the best idea uh, for me to do. And so it took me a while to like plan out a schedule and get into a routine. But really all it takes is like, prioritizing what you need to get done um, because it is possible. It's possible to get good grades and to have a job and to have a social life and to be involved on campus in various uh, ways. It's definitely possible and it just takes a little bit of, uh, yeah, of time management practice and uh, you'll get there eventually. It doesn't come right away. I've always been like super meticulous and like very good about like having a well-kept planner and everything. And that's like worked out super well for me until like this semester, um, things just like were super different. So I had to approach things in a different way. Um, I'm like learning from it, but I think a big way for me to like do well is like planning breaks for myself and planning like social time. Um, like you don't think about those because they seem like they should be natural, but like doing that, especially during these times when you're on the computer, like eight hours a day, um, it's really important. Yeah, I'll definitely give credit to my color-coded planner. Um, it is my life source. Um, to be completely honest, if the fire alarm went off right now, that would be the first item that I grab as I run out of a building. Um, but I think my biggest things that I've learned is like, to A, take a little bit on your plate at a time. Don't try to overload yourself right away because that's just setting you up, up for disaster. Um, but taking a little bit here and there, getting an idea of what your schedule actually looks like, what the time commitments for things are and doing it little by little and then building your plate up 
um, is probably one of the biggest ways. But I think another part of it is like, make sure that you're doing things that you're truly like passionate about and that you really, because I think that's the biggest thing is if you truly enjoy, you know, the activities that you're participating in, it's not going to feel like you're overwhelmed because you're going to be having fun. You're going to be enjoying it um, and being able to have those great experiences. Yeah, great. Uh, and excuse me if you hear thunder in the background. It just started thunderstorming here, so uh, it scared me. So could you describe a little bit of what safety looks like on campus? You know, I, I've heard a lot of concerns that, you know, we are in a larger city. So how does SLU going about keeping our campus and our students safe? So on campus, we have our Department of Public Safety, which is the very first number that you'll get when you come um, to your summer orientation, SLU 101. Um, that's the very first number you'll be given and you'll keep them in your phone forever. Um, and they're super great people. They, I have personally never felt unsafe on campus at all ever once, um, which is just something that I feel like is good to share. And, um, but you'll see GPS on foot, on bike, on golf cart, in car, you'll see them all over the place. They'll check into the residence halls to make sure things are going well. Um, to even get into our residence halls, you have to like live in that building. So you have to swipe your ID at the door and then again at the desk to be able to go up to your room. Um, so that's super secure. And then um, our DPS officers are always around just making sure things are going well. I've had people, I've had them like drive me to my car before um, just because they were being really nice to me, uh, which is awesome. And then we also have something called SLU Ride on campus, which I think goes hand in hand with safety. Um, you can call SLU Ride um, either on campus or off campus and they can come pick you up and bring you to where you need to be. So if you're at the library really late at night and you don't wanna walk back to your residence hall alone, that's okay. We have someone who can come and get you and like escort you to where you need to be. I think Kelly touched on a lot of good like campus resources. Um, a, a last one is that there's a lot of like blue emergency light poles scattered around campus. So if you press the button, um, a Department of Public Safety officer will be there like within a minute or something like that. Um, but personally, I also haven't felt unsafe on unsafe on campus. Um, my friends and I have like a Life 360 group with each other, um, just to like you know like have that extra level of precaution and just like, you know, being conscious about your surroundings, not walking alone, especially at night. Those are just important things to keep in mind, I think at any college campus. You don't have anything to add, Ben? No, that, that explanation, those explanations. Yeah, were it was great. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I know we are running close on time. So I'd like to ask one uh, final question. So for the students here, let's say 10 years passes, what do you think is gonna be the, the biggest and, and greatest memory that you have about your time at SLU? Oh my gosh, that's such a hard question. I could write a book. Um, <laughs> I think it's really like the smaller moments that are going to stand out the most to me because yeah there's big things that happen on campus. Um, but I think when I like think back on my time here it's going to be like small walks down West Pine with friends just like hanging out passing each other waving and just like smiling the whole time I feel like it's a really like inclusive and um, community based campus and so just like running into each other on West Pine is probably going to be my favorite thing. I think I'll remember a couple things like big events like packing shape it's for a big game or like going getting ice cream at Grand at like midnight or anything like that. Um, but like really finding like my passion because coming into college, I kind of just picked a major and didn't really like think twice about it. Um, but like as going through coursework now, like I really like narrowed it down to what I want to do. And I think that's just like really great about like the students here and like the faculty and staff is that they really want to like make you excited about like the rest of your life. So I think that's what I'll remember. Yeah, for me, I think it'll definitely, I, I can't pick, you know, necessarily one like specific moment because there are, have just been so many great times. But I think 
I will like always remember like the people that I've met here, especially the ones that are my best friends now, the people that are going to be in my wedding one day and the people that I've gotten to like grow and know and get to talk to. Like I always say like um, with a group of my friends that we're really close and like when a bunch of them went abroad, I would wake up at ungodly hours to just talk to them or like FaceTime with them or like all that. And like those kind of things, like those small moments here and there really add up to really make sure that like I've enjoyed, I've loved my time as a, now as a come of, coming up to be graduating. Um, I know it's a little sad, but it has been an absolute blast and I will never forget those small little moments. Well, thanks for sharing guys. That was, that's really, that was really awesome to hear. Um, I would like to thank the three of you, Kelly, Lydia, and Benjamin, for giving us a little bit about your experience at SLU. I, I really do hope uh, that this was helpful to you students. And please, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, my email address is richard.brown.1 at slu.edu. Um, I'd be more than happy to help. And I'm sure if you had any, mm -hmm. any, any further questions, uh, we would love to help. Thanks. Have a good night, guys.